Vocational Guidance Films Incorporated. Vocational Guidance Films Incorporated. He's the one they call Arthur Too Good. He's the one that makes you feel all right. Bread is the foundation of our daily meals. It's the number one food on the tables of people all over the world. So like America? For a good reason. It's the most economical source of the elements needed to provide energy and help build strong bodies. It is wholesome, tasty. Carby, and although starchy. Man does not live by bread alone, without it a meal seems incomplete. Take that, Bible. Stay in your lane. Formerly, most bread was made in the home, but it took experience and a lot of hard work to turn out good bread every time. Nothing's ever good enough for you kids. The housewife usually gave a sigh of relief when her efforts were successful. You want to give this a try, smart mouth? Today, the baking industry has taken over a good part of the job of providing America's daily bread and other bakery products. The industry produces over $2 billion worth of baked foods per year. Cha-ching! It employs more than 300,000 persons in a wide variety of jobs, calling for various degrees of skill and knowledge. At Wholesale Bakery, the actual baking is mainly machine operation. And except for certain key jobs, much of the work can be done by persons without any previous training. Now this is called bread. Get a good look, fellas. The first step in bread making is to prepare the flour by sifting and blending. Wait, that's borax! The other uh. ingredients such as sugar, yeast, shortening, milk, and salt... And fudge and sprinkles. ...are weighed or measured carefully according to set formulas. No one said there'd be math. A man called a mixer starts the bread on its way to the table by pouring the ingredients into a huge dough mixing machine. Actually, I consider myself a mixologist. He sets a scale which weighs out just the right amount of blended and sifted flour. The flour falls from an overhead hopper into the mixer, which is then set in motion. Like so much intrigue. Half a ton of dough. Enough for a thousand loaves can be mixed in some machines. Here the Pillsbury legions are forged and given a taste for man flesh. When the dough is ready, it is dumped into a trough, which the mixer's helper wheels into the air-conditioned fermentation room. Well, la de freaking da In this warm, moist place, the yeast cells multiply and the dough rises. Don't say warm or moist or yeast or rise. To make good bread, the dough must be allowed to ferment just the right length of time. Oh, that's too much. You wrecked it. The skill of the bakery superintendent is called on in working out proper schedules. Super Nintendo Chalmers? Next, the dough goes to the divider, where it is separated into pieces the right size for individual loaves. The divider man checks the weight of the pieces and regulates his machine so that the output is uniform. He's a real time bomb. The rounding machine rolls the dough into compact balls. Ouch! These travel slowly for a time on an endless belt in an air-conditioned cabinet or overhead proofer. This gives the dough a chance to rise again. As the Confederacy will soon do. Then the pieces are fed into the molder, which flattens them and rolls each one up into the proper shape for the pans. Now gluten is added to taste. The pieces are delivered to men known as penners, who place them in greased bake pans. Here's where trace amounts of boogers inevitably make it into the dough. The pan racker puts the pans on racks, which go into a proof box, where further rising called proofing takes place. Yup, that's dough all right, I can prove Here it. too, temperature, humidity, and time must be carefully controlled. Then the bread is ready for baking. And so am I, bro. The oven loader sets the pans on the moving steel belt, or hearth, which carries the bread slowly through the oven, where it can be observed through windows. It's the only way to ensure there's no hanky-panky. Finally, it is delivered, baked to a golden brown, and the oven dumper puts the loaves onto a belt leading to the cooling room. Where the Oompa Loompas wait. The oven man has a responsible job. He must regulate the temperature and humidity in various parts of the long oven, to ensure bread that is baked to a turn. Here the bread is radicalized. After cooling, the loaves go into a slicing and wrapping machine. The boys on night shift nicknamed it Kendrick. Razor sharp blades slice about 40 loaves a minute. The machine does all the work, but the operator must watch it closely to see that everything goes smoothly. He must ensure that the bread doesn't accidentally substantiate the body of Christ. The wrapping end of the machine too is completely automatic. Soon machines will cut the crust off and eat it and poop it out. Wholesale bread is usually distributed by root salesmen delivering to stores and restaurants all over the city. But this mass distribution has not put the small retail bakery out of business by any means. But we're working on it. In fact, most of America's 30,000 bakeries are small ones, serving their own neighborhoods. 
In addition to bread of all kinds, retail bakeries make a variety of foods, including cakes, donuts, pop tarts, rolls, pies, ding dongs, cookies, coffee cakes, gluten free pretzel thins, and fancy pastries. No thanks. Do you have any smoothies? Because of this wide variety of goods, to be a baker in a small shop, you have to have real skill and experience. Well, I'm out. Except for electrical mixing machines, flour sifters, and in some cases, ovens, the average retail bakery is not mechanized, so handwork is the rule. Doing that crazy handwork. One minute, you may be getting a batch of cookies ready for the oven, and soon after, be making pies or cakes. And no matter what you make, it must be really good if the bakery is to keep its customers. And here's an idea. Wear some gloves. Not only good to the taste, but clean and wholesome. And Christian and white. The conscientious baker is aware of his responsibility to the consumer's health. Mm, nice mouthfeel. The working hours for a baker and his helpers used to be long and arduous. But today, most bakeries operate on eight-hour shifts. But a baker must be in good physical condition, for some bakeries are warm places, especially in the summertime. Hold on, I'm going to write Bakers that down. Bakers usually learn their trade as helpers or by contracting as apprentices. Experienced bakers teach the apprentice the skills of the trade, and when the training period is completed, the apprentice is qualified for a job as a journeyman baker. Gee, thanks for the encouragement. Baking can also be learned in a vocational school. Nationally known schools of baking are located at the Dunwoody Institute, Pepperidge University, the Seibel Institute of Technology, and at the American Institute of Baking. And the Keebler Institute of Fudge. Such schools offer ambitious workers a chance to qualify for better jobs in the industry. Their programs include instruction in the science and theory of baking, shop management and related mathematics. And butter studies. These schools have completely equipped bakeries where the student learns all phases of wholesale and retail baking. Courses cover routine shop work on all bakery products and special study leading to a thorough understanding of the chemistry of baking. And how toast works. The subject of fermentation includes the study of yeast. Is that a euphemism for getting drunk? This one-celled fungus, with its facility for rapid reproduction, plays a vital role in baking. Not if you're an ancient Israelite. When the course of training in a good vocational school is completed, the students are prepared to take advantage of the opportunities for employment as foremen or production managers in large bakeries. Such men must be highly skilled technicians. And men. They must be men. There are also positions as executives for men who know baking thoroughly and who also have sound business ability. This is the greatest thing since men this. Men with scientific training are employed in laboratories engaged in routine analytical work for large bakeries or in research work for the industry as a whole. The Dairy Centrifuge, patent pending. In some bakeries, women are employed in light work such as putting frosting on rolls or cakes. Oh, are you sure? But in retail business, women are in greatest demand as salespersons. Here, a pleasant manner and courtesy are necessary. Give me some damn snickerdoodles. For women with exceptional ability, there are jobs as store managers for neighborhood retail bakeries and for companies which operate chains of retail sales rooms in large cities. But that's all the Apostle Paul allows. Owning your own bakery is an attractive goal to those who know baking and enjoy the work. But you must also know management and have enough business ability to handle the book work, which is a part of any commercial venture. Let's see, we're double bankrupt. But whether you operate a shop or work for someone else, you will find the baking industry an interesting field. Oh, when does that start? It is one which contributes to mankind's well-being. Citation needed. It is a permanent part of America's economy and is due for further expansion. It offers employment to many and a career for those who qualify. The few, the proud, the doughboys. If the work appeals to you and you're willing to learn with a sincere desire to get ahead, you may find some phase of the baking industry a worthwhile choice as your life work. Guess what, guys? We're the first people to ever watch this film all the way to the end. And we win a lifetime supply of chocolate croissants! Congratulations! Just kidding. This film bears nothing but disappointment. Goodbye.